There's no doubt the mysterious warrior was a Sith. Always two. There are. No more. No less. A master and an apprentice. But which was destroyed? The master or the apprentice? Mace Windu and Yoda. On the return of the Sith approximately ten years before the Clone Wars, Windu, hours after attending a council meeting, found Yoda alone in a small garden in the Jedi Temple. Denying Yoda's joke about whether he had an embarrassing question he couldn't ask in front of the council, he questioned whether the Grand Master had sensed something he had not told them of. Yoda explained he was instead sensing a lack of something, much to the confusion of Windu, leading to a debate about the concepts of nothing and something. Deciding the Force would educate him in due time, Windu decided to trust Yoda's judgment, leaving the room after not speaking for several minutes. Later, the Trade Federation initiated a blockade of the planet Naboo. At the request of Supreme Chancellor Finnis Valorum, the Jedi Council ordered Ki Gon Jinn and his apprentice, Obi-Wan Kenobi, to settle the dispute as emissaries of the Chancellor. Upon returning from their failed mission, the Council was made aware of a far greater threat. The ancient enemy of the Jedi, the Sith, had returned. However, neither Mace Windu or Ki Adi Mundi were particularly convinced that the Jedi Order's ancient nemesis could have returned much less avoid the awareness of the Jedi Council. Nevertheless, Windu assured them that the full resources of the Order would be utilized to verify the truth of Jin's claims, and more specifically, the identity of the Dark Warrior who attacked him on Tatooine. It was then that Jin revealed another significant discovery that he made during the course of his mission. Prior to his departure from Tatooine and subsequent return to Coruscant, Jin encountered Anakin Skywalker. Unknown to the Jedi, the slave SHMI Skywalker had given birth to a son who was exceptionally powerful with the Force. Because of Anakin's inherent potential and the circumstances surrounding his birth, Jin believed Anakin could have been conceived by the midi-chlorians. Windu knew that Jin referred to the Jedi prophecy of the Chosen One, the one who would restore balance to the Force by destroying the Sith. Although Skywalker possessed the highest concentration of midi-chlorians in his cells, Windu was skeptical of Jin's claims, but nonetheless agreed to meet the boy in the council's chamber where they would evaluate his aptitude with the Force. The council was impressed by Skywalker's ability to use the Force without any formal training, but they also sensed his emotional attachment to his mother and a great amount of fear within him. As such, they declined Jin's request to have him trained in the Jedi arts. Windu personally felt that Skywalker was too old to commit his life to the Jedi Code, as well as the Force, without the distraction of his emotional attachments. The Council soon reversed its decision after Jin's death during the Battle of Naboo, entrusting Skywalker's training to the newly anointed Jedi Knight Obi-Wan Kenobi. Windu continued to doubt Skywalker's ability to commit himself to the Jedi Way, however, and his ill-concealed distrust would put a strain on their relationship throughout the years as Skywalker ascended the ranks of the Jedi Order. During the funeral of Ki Gon Jin, which the Naboo waited to begin until the arrival of the Jedi Council, Yoda and Windu realized that Jin had been correct. The Sith had indeed survived and endured over the last millennium. Yoda quoted the Rule of Two, an ancient Sith philosophy that limited their ranks to two Sith Lords, a master and an apprentice, causing Windu to ponder over which of the two was defeated by Kenobi. When Jin's body had turned to ash, Windu and the other council members left the funeral. Afterward, he attended the victory celebration on Naboo along with Yoda, several members of the Jedi Council, and the newly elected Supreme Chancellor Sheev Palpatine.